Uh, hello and welcome to this session where I'm going to be sharing uh, the little information that I have uh, about cancer. Why are cancers on the rise? Why is it that every year, currently, as the world, we keep on registering uh, new cases of cancer? Numbers keep on increasing and increasing. Well, there are, some, there are uh, so many factors that we know that could be contributing to, the, uh, to an increase in the cancer rates uh, and incidences, but there are those ones also that, uh, that are not yet known, and there are so many. So at uh, this juncture, uh, dear brothers and sisters, allow me to start sharing my story uh, briefly. Yes, uh, let me look for my pointer quickly. Uh, yes, uh, welcome once again. Why an increase in cancer cases? Why an increase in uh, cancer incidences uh, every year? Why is it that uh, the incident, re incidence rate of cancers is not going down, but uh, with the time, actually with years, it keeps on actually increasing. So uh, we are here to know, we are here to share, I'm here to share with you the few uh, reasons, the few factors that I know, and the, uh, my colleagues also who are junior, senior, and the colleagues also, peers, are, we also keep on actually supplementing and adding on uh, the information that I will maybe uh, miss. So, uh, as usual, the presenter is uh, Dr. Manuel Chiza Robert. And uh, at this point, uh, quickly let me take you to uh, the outline or uh, the overview. Yes, uh, we are going to look at definition, a uh, review of the body cells, uh, categories of cells, a uh, quick review of cell division, uh, risk factors and the causes, examples of cancers, diagnosis, prognosis, uh, prevention, and uh, recommendations. So definition, by definition, what is cancer? Uh, for uh, the sake of light, uh, dear members, allow me to turn off this video. Yeah, we uh, the definition, uh, cancer is abnormal and controlled growth and division of the body cells. That is to say cells grow out of control, refuse to die, they go beyond their boundaries and start colonizing organs with the normal cells, eventually displacing and causing more problems. And of course, among the problems, death is uh, there. So uh, members, look at this brick wall. Sorry. Members, you can look at this brick wall. So our body is also made up of bricks or blocks or blocks. So those bricks that make up our body are called the body cells. When you look at the, uh, the hair, the hair is made up of cells, the skin, and its appendages, of course, like here, which I've already mentioned, the nails, they are all made up of cells. Uh, the liver is made up of cells, the intestines, the eyes, the, the bones are made up of cells. Uh, the, uh, when you look at uh, the kidneys, they are made up of cells. So in summary, our bodies are made up of trillions and trillions of body cells or cells. Those are the smallest functional units of life. Remember, those of you who studied the biology, senior on biology, uh, a cell was defined as the, uh, the smallest functional unit of an organism or life. So likewise, our bodies are like this uh, block or the brick wall that you are seeing, made up of cells. However, you can't see cells using a naked eye. We're able to see all cells of each and every organ using an aided eye called a microscope. So 
in the event whereby these body blocks or the body uh, bricks uh, 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 try to undergo uncontrolled division or uncontrolled reproduction that is out of hand, and they keep on modifying the body's natural uh, regulatory mechanisms, that is when we end up with cancers. So dear brothers and sisters, let us now proceed and I now show you the structure of the cell. This is an, uh, the structure of an animal cell. Not all cells, yes, a cell can take any shape. There are those ones which are, which are circular or, or spherical, others are rectangular, others are, 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 are square in shape like that. So a cell can, others, others are ellipsoid or elliptical, so a cell can take any shape. So this is a eukaryotic cell um, where human cells belong, where animal cells belong. So you can see in the center, this circle that you are seeing, this is a nucleus. Um, okay, let me begin from the outside. This is the outer, the cell membrane uh, with the structures like microtubules, microvilli, uh, the, uh, the, the, the microfilaments like that, as you can see. So uh, this is the inside, this is a, a semi-free component region called the, uh, the cytoplasm. Uh, general, of course, correctly known as the cytosol. So this is the cytoplasm with the tiny, tiny cell organs, which are called the organelles. So from the cytoplasm, you go to what we call the nucleus. Within this nucleus that you are seeing, it's where we have the genetic material or the molecule of inheritance, molecules of inheritance called the, the DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, the molecule of inheritance the one that keeps the information about each one of us, about me and you. The, the skin color that I have is found within the DNA that is housed here. Where do we find DNA? Yes, DNA is, of course, kept in chromosomes and what we call structures called chromosomes, they are 21. If it is a, a, notoso, if it is a germ cell, they are 23. Uh, then 46 in a body cell or a somatic cell like this one. So, uh, uh, let us continue and appreciate. Like you can see, this is a human, a human figure, and uh, we have picked cells, and a few cells have been magnified uh, from uh, this human being. So we have, as we continued and further picked one more cell, which we capitalized on and magnified further more, as you can see. So in this cell that has been magnified further, you can see that you have our cell membrane. We have, uh, sorry, we have our cell membrane. We have the cytoplasm with the, the tiny organs and our nucleus here with the surrounding, uh, uh, surrounding smooth and rough endoplasmic reticuli, reticula. Yes. Now, furthermore, as you go into the other building block, which is the cell, we are going further within the nucleus, into the nucleus. Now we are leaving the sitting room and now we are going to the bedroom. What is kept within the bedroom or all this nucleus is what we call the genetic material. The genetic material is kept in the form of chromosomes. So the chromosomes are masses. Now you can see we have picked one chromosome because I said a germ cell like a marrow spermatozoon or a, a female oocyte or egg or ovum, uh, all those are germ cells or the gametes. For them, they are haploid cells. Now here, I'm take, I have taken you to a, a body cell or a somatic cell, which has a karyotype of 46 chromosomes. So our DNA, the molecule of inheritance that keeps all the information about us, whether bad characters or good characters, disease, genes, what, what, disease, the gene, uh, disease, genes for diseases, like that. So you can see we have 46. So out of the 46 chromosomes, we have picked one chromosome, as you can see. This is actually a, a chromatid. We have picked one. So you can see, uh, furthermore, we are magnifying it, and you can see that uh, it is, we have a strand of DNA, which is a super, coil, super coiled onto these structures that are called the histone proteins. The histone proteins are the ones onto which 
uh, the DNA strands as a rope keeps on super coiling. You can see uh, it forms beads like they will have rosaries, uh, rosa the, the Catholic rosary, you know how it is organized and arranged. Uh, we have the 10 decades, and in between every decade, you have what we call the, the mysteries, where we reach and recite the mysteries like that. So in, this is what we call Eringa, DNA. Then also you reach histones, the mass of histones with the supercore DNA on it. Uh, then you link her DNA like this. So eventually you find that the more you keep on unwinding or unwinding this strand of DNA, you reach it and it is able to be magnified. And you look at these nitrogen bases that are exposed. So these nitrogen bases on the DNA, furthermore, uh, there is a way that they arrange, they are arranged in the form of what you call the introns and the exons. And within the exons, that's where we have active genes, the coding regions of the exons. That's where we have the coding regions of the DNA. So the moment the, 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 that's where we have the uh, within the exons, that's where we, where we have the genes, the coding genes. So anything about me, if it is the, maybe black hair. My, my, I know I'm of a skin, black skin complexion. So it is the genes that, there are genes that on this DNA that determine my skin color. There are genes that determine my behavior, where I'm always jolly, whether I'm always jolly, whether I'm tall or short or me of medium height, uh, with the way I walk, everything is on my DNA. Uh, the, the baldness, the bald head maybe, or the gray, the early graying of hair, all those are genes which we have kept on inheriting from our parents, okay? So uh, this, where does this DNA come from? The, the beginning of this DNA comes from, starts from the day uh, the mother donated an egg, uh, which is an ovum, uh, a haploid cell, or half the number of chromosomes with 23. Then also my father, the, the male parent also donated the sperm, spermatozoon. The two fused 23 plus 23 to form a karyotype of uh, 46 chromosomes. So it means I inherited genes from the maternal side as well as also genes from the paternal side. The equally, yes. So to form one, again, one cell which was a zygote, uh, a zygote at fertilization, a zygote of course underwent those series of developments from uh, uh, from a zygote to a, a, a cytotrophoblasty, sensitotrophoblasty, until the whole fetus, a human, a future human being uh, like me and you, uh, got formed. So, where do cancers come from? It is from this background that we are going to appreciate. It is from this background and this basis that we are going to appreciate the origin of cancers. So we have appreciated that, we, yes, we have trillions of, our bodies are made up of trillions of cells. Then you, you magnify one cell, you look at it, you go further into the nucleus or into the bedroom where the genetic material is kept in the form of chromosomes, chromatids. Then you go further, uh, the, you look at the DNA which is kept there, the molecule of inheritance that has information about me and you whether it is about diseases or about characters, good characters and bad characters, and that you keep on passing through reproduction to, uh, to our, our offspring, then they also produce like that. That's why I can, yes, I can produce a child maybe who resembles my great grandfather. And when you may be a grandmother, may, when my grandmother sees such a child, who said, oh, this child resembles your great grandfather who died maybe in 19, maybe 32. That is how genetics is interesting. Uh, I, can, uh, I can produce a child who resembles, uh, actually, uh, maybe my great grandmother. And you ask yourself, how, does, how is that information kept within the DNA? So that is how it is. Or you find that there is someone maybe in the family who used to be very notorious, and then you find that amongst the children, you have that person who is that child who is very notorious or assertive, bold. And when the grandfather or the grandmother looks at him or her, says to her that, you know what, in 1950s, there was uh, your uncle uh, who, who was like this and this. This is the exact replica. The, the genes, it means that the genes are there. Yes, that is how interesting it is. So genes, everything now, the cancers that I'm talking about, the cancer that we are going to talk about, 
is the rotative and it revolves around the abnormal DNA, abnormal genes like that. That's why, for example, if uh, certain cancers, like for example, breast cancer, some types of breast cancers tend to run in the families. You find that if the mother died of breast cancer, among the also the females, the female children, of course, one of them also get the cancer. The same applies to chronic cancer. When you read uh, chronic cancer, cancer of the large intestine, which is chronic cancer. If, for example, if you read about the Lynch syndrome, uh, those syndromes where you have the hereditary non polyposis correct uh, cancer, HNEPCC, HNE, uh, hereditary non uh, polyposis coli, uh, those uh, mutations, the Lynch syndrome, you read about it, you will find out that. All those cancers are inherited, inherited. They actually they, they are in certain families. Okay. Yeah. For example, if you read about there is a certain the family of of a family of presidents. I don't want to mention them. A family of presidents in the United States, because they have produced more than one president. They have that abnormality. So every Every I think every year they, they, they keep on going, they have that syndrome. They keep on going for uh, chronoscopies uh, so that they don't reach a certain stage and they develop uh, those cancers, the coronary cancer, large, cancer of the large intestine. So uh, still, uh, as you can see from the DNA, we go to the genes and then to chromosomes. Of course, the order is we begin with the, uh, the cell, uh, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, then the nucleus, which is the bedroom. Uh, then within the nucleus, you have our chromosomes. You know, our chromosomes, uh, of course, uh, are made up of super coiled masses of DNA. Here it has been unwound. Uh, of course, these are the nitrogen bases. Uh, of course, in the categories of pyrimidines and the purines, the adenine, cytosine, thymine, guanine. You know we don't have uh, uracil in DNA that is found in on uh, RNA that is ribon ribonucleic acid, not in deoxyribonucleic acid. So uh, the more you look at this DNA, the more it is growing and growing, becoming larger and larger. You will see that you have segments which are genes. Genes are the regions or zones that are found in exons. And the part also in a few introns, but exons are the ones which keep on coding for giving instructions, uh, produce black melanin or produce brown melanin. This person is naturally brown, uh, produce long hair or short hair, uh, let him be short tempered, or do everything, let him maybe have a mental problem, or certain mental illnesses also run uh, in the families, so they are the ge genetic. If it is maybe a, a, a disease, a gene, a good gene that will protect someone against HIV, like for example, the way you know about discordant couples, discordant people who do not actually contract HIV because they have a certain mutation that favors them, uh, that, that enables them to lack uh, certain receptors, like chemokine co-receptor, chemokine co-receptor 5, CCR5, and the CX, CR4. So you find that you, because of the, that advantageous mutation, they don't contract HIV disease. So uh, now we know everything about genes. Now let's look at the DNA damage. How do cancers come about? All these factors rotate around the DNA damage. Yes, we have endogenous agents, uh, of course, endogenous agents which damage our DNA. You raise in order for any cell to replicate or reproduce itself, the DNA must first reproduce itself. And this DNA or the cell must undergo what you call each and every cell undergoes a cell cycle. Each and every somatic cell, of course, must undergo a cell cycle, excuse me, whereby it keeps on reproducing itself. Now, if it so happens that this DNA, that, uh, there are natural mechanisms or natural repair mechanisms in that each and every normal DNA Cero, normal cellular DNA is regulated. In an event whereby the cell is dividing with undergoing cell division with an abnormal DNA, that cell is arrested at a certain stage in the cell cycle so that the, the special enzymes responsible first repair the, this, the, the first repair this DNA. 
if the, the, the repair mechanisms are successful, the zero is allowed to, it is given instructions, continue now, your DNA is saved, has been repaired by the engineers called the enzymes, like the DNA polymerases, the topoisomerases, it has been repaired, therefore you are free to continue reproducing and undergoing the zero cycle. Then in the event whereby DNA repair fails, such, such a cell is forced to commit suicide through a process called apoptosis. In an event whereby that cell uh, defies death, defies apoptosis and refuses to take instructions of death, you know what happens? It means that cell has become rebellious. It is the one which is going to become cancerous. It has turned into malignancy. So it keeps on it keeps on producing. The moment it defies and refuses to die, the moment it acquires immortality and defies apoptosis, uh, it means we are going to end up with a, a cell that is reproducing itself with defective. It means all the products, all the offsprings uh, that is producing, all the daughter cells being produced have defective DNA, which is having mutations, and therefore those are the ones which we call malignant cells or the cancer cells. And they keep on producing what we call a mass, masses, swellings, and tumors like that, okay? And that is which, which, is, which are eventually translated into cancer. So these agents, these factors that we are going to look at, all point at the DNA damage. So endogenous, we have endogenous agents like that, rated, for example, bio acid, macro, macrophage, and neutrophil, pro, 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 neutrophil products like uh, reactive oxygen species, reactive nitrogen species, all these cause DNA damage. For example, in our bodies, every time we are breathing in oxygen, uh, it, uh, the moment it uh, uh, performs its functions, we are able, it is able to release byproducts called the reactive oxygen species or the free radicals. The free radicals end up damaging the DNA, our DNA, but those free radicals, remember, are scavenged by natural mechanisms which we have in our own, in our bodies, like glutathione, fluorine, the rubin itself, and other, for example, trace elements like zinc, selenium, all those are bodies antioxidants which are endogenous. So that's why we are not harmed by reactive oxygen species. However, as our bodies keep on aging from the age of 40, 50, 60, 70, these natural mechanisms keep on actually weakening. And that is why in most cases, the more we age in years, that is also, we find the also the, the incidences of cancers keep on increasing with the age. Not all the cancers, yes. Yes, then you have, these are products from our own bodies, endo, from within endogenous agents. Then here we also have exogenous agents from outside the body, from the environment, like smoke, maybe tobacco smoke, exposure to radi uh, ionizing radiation, heavy metals like mercury and others, arsenic, uh, like others. Yes, we have viruses and other genotoxins. All these are exogenous agents which also end up infecting us and accessing our bodies and body cells, and they end up damaging our DNA, okay? And eventually, when the DNA repair mechanisms fail, we end up with, of course, rebellious cells, which become abnormal. They cease to look and to behave like the normal cells, which follow, all, which follow and obey all the instructions, and eventually we end up with cancers of various types, as we are going to see. So as we continue to see, when there's DNA damage, we shall end up with epigenetic alteration and also somatic mutations like that. And eventually we end up with many primary, many primary non-DNA repair genes. Uh -huh. Then here we are going to see with the, uh, to end up with epigenetic alteration still, where there is of course microRNAs, CPGs, iron methylation, histone modification, or chromatin remodeling, DNA repair genes like that. Then here you see germline mutations here, uh, DNA repair genes still coming, germline mutations, this, in the spa, this, uh, this is, happens in the sperm cells, male sperm cells, and also uh, the female eggs, or the ones we call ova in the plural. Uh, so eventually, when there's DNA repair deficiency, we end up with a large, large increase or the a large pool 
in an unrepaired DNA damage you know, causing the cells. The eventual end up with a large increase in somatic mutations and epigenetic alterations. And eventually, these cells keep on multiplying. Yes, multiply altered through defect with the driver mutation and eventually progression to cancer. Okay, so uh, let's look at categories of body cells. Body cells in the pathology, we can group them into three groups or categories. And they fall into three, as you can see, have labile cells, stable cells, and permanent, permanent cells. Labile cells, these are cells which are always undergoing cell division, like those ones that form the epithelial linings or the mucous membranes of the oral cavity. Those ones, uh, for example, in the morning, I can wake up and take hot tea. And that hot tea happens to burn my mouth um, in my oral cavity, it burns me, it burns my tongue. And even it, I reach a point of uh, palpating the, the walls of the oral cavity or the mouth, and I feel disquamation, disquamated the cells or disquamated the skin, the inner skin or the mucous membranes. And I start this banange, eva jenzibanji, ichaira anyocheje, this tea has burnt me, ichaira anyocheje chane, ampamiji, mukanwa. This tea has burnt me, it has hammered me properly. Uh, and even uh, experiencing this formation of the mucous membranes, you can imagine. Then the following day, you palpate the wound, it is nowhere to be seen. Meaning the cells have been replaced. The dead cells have been replaced by the normal ones. So these are cells which are always undergoing cell division. They have a tunnel, a high turnover rate, like in the mucous membranes, uh, the hair cells, of course, uh, the skin, the narrow cells, the bone marrow cells, which are always producing blood cells. They are always... They, are, they all fall in the rubber, in the category of rubber or cells, with these ones which are always undergoing cell division. Then, in most cases, most cancers, you realize that the more the cells are rubber, the more they are always undergoing cell division, this is usually, the, the, the more they become actually, uh, the, the, the more they become the origin of most cancers that we shall see. Then you have stable cells. These, these ones only replicate when there is a need, when there is a necessity. Examples of stable cells who have the hepatocytes of the river, those, those are the brooding blocks of the river. The river cells are called hepatocytes. Hepatocytes only undergo cell division when there is a need. For example, when I take too much alcohol or too much drugs and it may be they poison my river and they kill some cells, they call hepato, hepat, they cause the uh, death of some certain hepatocytes. They are deliver the hepatocytes are able to replace the dead cells. Then when they are replaced, they are not divide again. They first keep there. Then those ones which are oral, they are replaced by young ones like that. But you, the moment you keep on insulting those cells, with the time they also become cancerous. And that is how hepatitis B, B, C, D viruses end up infecting the liver cells. And with the time, when the river has lost the capacity to regenerate, when the DNA has been altered by the viruses, eventually the cells become malignant. Okay? Others, of course, of course, you know, even river cells is how it comes about. Then uh, we have what we call permanent cells, like the skeletal muscle cells, uh, brain neural cells, especially the neurons. We are born with, for these ones, they are always in the cell cycle in what we call the G0 phase. We are born with a specific number of these cells. Therefore, they rarely undergo cell division. Uh, and usually they stop undergoing cell division in the early childhood, in, in, the, in the first like, the first two years, the first one year of life, uh, or the first eight months of life, uh, they are still undergoing cell division. And eventually they stop. We are born with a predetermined number. So examples of the neurons of the brain, of course, the neurons of the nervous system, we have the skeletal muscle cells. Yes. So for these ones, yes, we also have cancers which originate from there, but there are not very many compared to these ones, to the ones which originate from the rubber cells and the stable cells. Now, let us now continue and you see the quick, we have a quick review of cell division and cell cycle. Two types of cell division we have meiosis. This is a process by which the gametes or reproductive cells uh, reproduce themselves. The female egg, the male sperm, the two fuse to form a zygote, which is a, a future human being like me and you. Then you have the mitosis. Mitosis is this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, multiplicative 
or replicative cell division whereby all the skin cells, whereby the somatic cells divide themselves. Somatic cells, the body cells, the ones that form the hair, the skin, the bones, the liver, the heart, uh, the, uh, everything that you know. All those are building blocks, uh, all the cells which undergo this type of cell division. So phases of both meiosis and mitosis, we have, you know, we have interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Then when it comes to meiosis, you know that you have interphase still, then you have prophase one and two, metaphase one and two, anaphase one and two, prophase one and two, that is in meiosis. So let me not delay on this. So like you have seen, each and every body cell undergoes what we call a cell cycle, as it's producing cells itself. So this one that is in light purple, this is what we call interphase. Interphase, which is divided into what we call G0 phase, where the permanent cells belong, the non-dividing cells belong here and they're always in G0 phase. Then others which are always undergoing cell division, they go, they go through this cell cycle. So this interphase is divided into G, 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 G1 phase, or gap phase one, uh, synthesis phase where DNA replicates itself, or the, uh, then you also have the gap phase two. You can see in the time it takes for each phase of interphase, uh, as you can see. Then you finally we also have the M phase, which is the mitotic phase, which is further divided into a uh, PUMAT. Uh, remember the, the whole of this is interphase with gap G0, G1, S, and G2. Then eventually we have the, meta, the, the, the mitotic phase, which is further divided into PUMAT, prophase, metaphase, uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Yes, so this is it. So any cell that is detected by those natural mechanisms, uh, of course, uh, the P53 uh, gene comes in and it's pro by product products, uh, the retinoblastoma gene. So any cell that is detected that is having a, uh, an abnormal uh, DNA, it is arrested at one of these uh, cell cycle phases and is first repaired, the DNA is first repaired. Then when the DNA is successfully repaired, that cell is allowed to continue producing itself like that, giving daughter cells like that. Then in the event where by DNA repair fails, that cell is forced to, to commit suicide and it must die. Then in the case in an event where the, by that body cell becomes rebellious and refuses to die and acquires immortality, it means it has become rebellious, it is no longer normal, it is a rebel, it is, has become cancerous or transformed into a malignant one. And that is the one which keeps on producing various subtypes of cancer cells, chrono cells, chrono expansion, until the cancer grows, it starts even migrating to other body parts which should not be embedded. Because normal body cells should remain in their natural position, in their, in their locality. But the cancer cells with the time, they start even going into the neighborhood and beyond the neighborhood to invade even unrated organs, unrated cells, and they take over the whole body. Eventually, they compete with the normal cells, and eventually they take over until the human being recovers or dies. Okay? So, what are the risk factors and causes of cancer? What are the risky factors? Okay, yes, uh, of course, those natural factors, you'll find the retinoblastoma genes that regulate retinoblastoma genes, uh, the P protein P53 gene. Then we also have other molecules like the cyclins and the cyclin-dependent kinases. Those are the CDKs, the C cyclins, and the cyclin-dependent kinases, CD, uh, C, and the CDK complexes. All those take part in as far as the cell division is concerned and the regulation. Uh, so uh, this juncture, allow me to take you to risk factors and causes of cancer. Well, there, as you can see, I have categorized them. We have category A, where we have environmental factors, but you see that some of them keep on overlapping. So in the environment, we have one exposure to chemicals like nitrosamines, benzene, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, as well dies. Members, when he, if you know that you like muchomo, if you know that you like muchomo, you like grilled meats, uh, all these meats actually, the moment they, uh, you roast them up, the temperature is above uh, actually 120 degrees, like it is in those ovens, they start releasing what you call nitrosamines. Nitrosamines are known uh, chemicals 
that induces stomach cancers, liver cancers, and cancers of also other body organs, nitrosamine. Yes, that's why a person who, yes, meat generally has, when you eat too much of it, has generally, it has actually negative effects. Uh, but the one who eats boiled meat and the one who eats muchomo regularly, the one who is actually uh, at a, a, a higher risk of developing cancer is that one who is always consuming muchomo and grilled, generally grilled meats and uh, yeah, and charred meats, those ones with the, the ones who call it the those ones which have carbonized. Yes. Even maize, by the way, even maize, when you overroast it and it carbonizes, it ends up also producing nitrosamines like that. Even meats, for meats, they produce a lot. Even fish. Yes, then benzene, all these uh, environmental chemicals that we could keep on encountering. I know many of us, all of us, most of us enjoy muchomo. Muchomo is delicious, man. Yes, uh, then we have cyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are released from fumes, even in smoke, tobacco smoke, like that. Uh, then azo dyes, there are certain dyes which are carcinogenic. They induce, the moment we come into contact with them, they induce our body cells to become cancerous. Uh, of course, you must be exposed for a certain uh, period of time uh, and repeatedly. Uh, then um, here we have diets and lifestyles. Yes, regular consumption of grilled meats. I've already explained this, what, what happens. Uh, then process the foods with the preservatives. Uh, then after process the foods with the preservatives, like benzene. Of course, see, these companies will not tell you that uh, sodium benzoate is, uh, is dangerous, but you always consume. Yes, tomato sauces. Most of us like tomato sauces. This one, which is processed. We find that people don't want to consume uh, tomatoes, the fresh ones, but they resort to taking tomato sauce all the time, every time, every time. I'm not stopping you from taking your tomato sauces and, the, and those preserved foods. I'm not stopping you, but you take in moderation. Once in a while, a few times, or twice a week, is, that's enough. Not every day. Yes, when you take tomatoes, make sure that if you're enjoying kachumbari, Make sure that you take, you know, uh, uh, those tomatoes are sprayed uh, by using those uh, insecticides, like uh, the one we call ambush, those organophosphates, they are sprayed, including those onions that they use, and other vegetables, they are all sprayed using those agricultural chemicals, the, the organophosphates. So, even when you when you are eating kachumbari, when you're enjoying that kachumbari, have you ever asked yourself how many times, how many cycles they, they wash those tomatoes? May I believe in most cases they wash just once one cycle from the market is onions, they just cabbages, uh, they wash just one in one cycle, uh, they just they remove from water. Ah. One cycle or two cycles in most cases, I believe, and they just chop, chop, they prepare. Here, sir, doctor, your kachumbari is here. Uh, my brother, your kachumbari is here. Then in the process yet, yes, you are eating safely. Yes, those tomatoes, even when you are at home and you are going to eat raw tomatoes in the form of kachumbari with the onions, please, please wash them at least five cycles. And that is what I do when I'm consuming those things. Yes, at least you reduce on the risks. So you find that you are eating fresh, yes, onions, raw onions, yes, you are safe. Eating raw tomatoes, you are safe. But those chemicals which have not been washed uh, thoroughly, they are the ones also which actually become part of carcinogens. You need to be aware. Then aflatoxin contamination in certain foods like in grains, genuts, the legumes, like beans. You know, when we store those grains, like rice, wheat, what, what, in those moist and cold stores, we end up with the uh, morods, uh, morods called the Aspergillus uh, fravus. Aspergillus fravus, uh, those are morods, the fungi. Uh, for example, when you keep bread and it starts developing fungi and it's actually going bad or decomposing, those are examples of morods. Those grayish things that you see growing on bread, those are the, 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 they are in the category of the morods. So morods called in the class category or in the class called the Aspergillus fravus uh, contaminate. They grow on our on our grains and eventually they start producing aflatoxins, even in genuts. If you like, you enjoying genuts, 
every time gina source gina source watch out uh, you need to at least go enjoy that source like three times a week it, it is there's no problem so aflatoxins eventually they keep on uh, accumulating in our bodies and eventually they cause their carcinogens they cause carcinogenesis and transform our liver cells and that is how we end up with liver cancers yeah cancers of also the stomach as well like that and uh, like that even in, uh, when it comes also to bone, bone marrow, some of them also have been actually pointed at, have been actually implicated in certain blood cancers, but the uh, researchers are still ongoing, don't worry. Then if fat and sugary foods are also, also induced, actually can, they can also induce cancers. Fatty and sugary foods. The only factor, by the way, that is not, that we know that contributes to the development of prostate cancer, of course, for males. Females don't have the prostate, but excessive all the time, uh, excessive consumption of fatty foods. Watch out if you're a gentleman, if you're a male, and you like fatty foods all the time. Yes, yes. And by the way, at, uh, every male at the age of 40 and above should be going at least for, for prostate cancer checkup. They just, yeah, you should be visiting a doctor. About four, uh, 40 years and above, it is, it is okay to keep on going for screening at least once every year. Yes, uh, for screening. Uh, smoking tobacco, within the tobacco smoke, we have what we call chemicals, mainly benzopyrins and the nitrosamines again, uh, plus the other aromatic uh, polycyclic hydrocarbons. They are all products, they are found, there are many other chemicals, hundreds of them that are found in tobacco smoke. But among the deadly ones who have the benzopyrins and the nitrosamines, you can feel free to Google, my dear brothers and sisters, and you also keep on educating yourselves. So chronic heavy consumption of alcohol, you know, in ethanol, whiskeys, those are uh, Captain Morgan, may I have my money? Hey, have my money. I have my too much money. God bless me. I no longer take these beers. I no longer take these Rocco Brews, Musuru, Urguagua. For what? This why should I take Toronto? Me, I'm a rich man. My family is rich. I should therefore upgrade and graduate and I start taking Captain Morgan, uh, uh, GDBs. Uh, there's this John Walker that is the talk of the day. The talk of the talk around the common talk around town is back. Uh, John Walker is back. Yes, those days they used to be popular here in 1960s and 70s. Uh, it was a popular whiskey. So these ones produce a metabolite called uh, all the alcohols, uh, the body works on, on them, and uh, they we end up with the high concentrations of, of uh, acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde also has uh, a carcinogenic effects. What is a carcinogen? A carcinogen is that chemical or that element that induces cancers to develop in our bodies. Those are carcinogens. So aflatoxins that you have seen are also chemicals and they are carcinogens. So sedentary lifestyles and obesity. So all these sedentary lifestyles where we don't exercise, where is eating, eating sugary foods, eating out of carbohydrates, meats, what, what, and we yet we don't even exercise. So obesity also, all these are factors that induce actually cancers. Uh, you will find out, yes, uh, uh, three, exposure to ionizing radiation such as X-rays, gamma rays, ETC. New, for example, uh, it is not advisable to every time you develop chest pain. Uh, doctor, uh, uh, let me go for X-ray, chest X-ray. I have joint pain, X-ray. Uh, you put yourself at risk of developing cancers because uh, that's why even uh, uh, medics who work in such environments uh, they are what you call, of course, dosimeters, which they put on on their gadgets and on their arteries. Uh, they keep on actually showing the levels of radiations that their bodies are absorbing. Then after some weeks or some month, they go to rest for some time like that. That's how they keep on working. But of course, they are always protected heavily with those uh, red sheets, uh, red aprons like that, that uh, absorb, uh, that keep on absorbing most uh, ionizing radiation. So uh, in summary, it is not advisable uh, for any human being to keep on uh, going or repeated all the time, I'm going for X-ray, 
I'm going for MRI, even if you have the money, no. There are protocols, there are, there are things that we follow, uh, there's, there are criteria that we follow, okay? Yes, then in new, there are countries uh, like nuclear react accidents uh, ex uh, or explosions, like it happened the uh, Chernobyl disaster of 1986 in, in present day Ukraine, by then it was still Soviet Union. So the Chernobyl disaster, uh, you know, this pro there was a prominent footballer called uh, Petrov. Petrov was playing in Aston Villa. It was in, I think, around 2011 or 2012. It was diagnosed with, it was in the Premier League, it was diagnosed with the leukemia. And it, they traced it to the disaster. By the time uh, this Chernobyl disaster occurred in 1986, he was still a younger boy of around five or six years by then. And it was they were staying, the family was staying near the Chernobyl disaster, Chernobyl near that nuclear reactor that exploded. Then Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bomb explosion in 1945. Up to now, the, 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 the people in those areas, the regions are still producing children with the, a lot of genetic abnormalities. Certain cancers are prevalent in uh, those regions of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, of recent, in 2000, I think 11, 11 or 10, 10 or 11, uh, there was a tsunami, an earthquake that shook some parts of Japan. Uh, remember Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor, uh, exp uh, one reactor exploded uh, and it started releasing uh, radioactive materials into the sea. You know what happened? If you read about uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor, actually uh, disaster, of course, this did not claim many lives, no? It was contained. But you remember those, uh, the government of Japan started importing water for for, for, for the population of those regions that were affected in of recent. Yes, so exposure to ultraviolet radiation. By the way, we enjoy these cars. How sure are we that uh, some, uh, some metals or some components of our cars release radiation? Probably, we don't know. We need, that's why we need more researchers. Maybe these, uh, uh, these Benzes, these Toyota brands that we are always driving every the, the series, this new series has come, I must buy. This is it. What if? They might be. They might. Has, uh, there's, I don't think that there are many researchers out there who are actually bothering to investigate whether some of these, uh, some, some of these cars don't have radioactive components. I doubt. Even the clothes that we put on, who knows? Who knows? They look at number four. We have exposure to ultra, ultraviolet radiations from the sun and the other sun day. You know, people like, you know, when we keep on exposing our skins, especially there are people who are not grateful to God. Or that because they were born with darker skin complexions, they want to defame God and insult God by breaching themselves. They get an unnatural brown color. They, become, they want to become white because they feel inferior when they have that darker skin complexion. That's how God created you. You need to be appreciative to him because the moment you keep on using those, uh, uh, those uh, Vaseline's and the jerrys uh, with the breaching creams, uh, with the breaching components, with hydroquinone components, they keep on removing melanin, that black melanin and the exposing the body cells uh, with their nuclei to the ultraviolet radiation. And eventually the ultraviolet radiations start hammering the DNA and uh, damaging it. Then with the time, that person who breached uh, eventually starts developing skin cancers. It starts like a nervous, uh, eventually it becomes maybe a uh, basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma or cancer, that cancer of those types. Then someone starts cursing, God, God, why me? Why, why are you giving me cancers? And you forget that you breached, you, are, you kept on breaching yourself. Yet that dark camera in actually keeps so is protective against the, the ultraviolet radiations from the sun. So you need to be aware. That's why uh, right skinned people are usually prone to skin cancers compared to the darker skinned people. I tell you the truth. This is, you can even Google. Those of you like Googling, you can Google about these facts. The, when you look at the albinos, albinos naturally lacker, they are born with, they have a genetic problem. So they end up with, the, they are born without, with the normal melanocytes. With the, they are born with the melanocytes. 
but the genes which code for normal melanin are mutated, they are dysfunctional. Therefore, those genes, you find that they are able to, they, they, some are functioning, they are partially mutated, and eventually you find that that albino is lacking just one element. The, the genes that code for a functional tyrosinase enzyme are missing or they are mutated. And eventually you find that the melanocytes are there which produce melanin, but the enzyme activity is dysfunctional. So the enzyme which is supposed to be converting tyrosine amino acid, converting it into melanin in those melanocytes, you find that that enzyme is defective because, and we end up with what we call albinism. So that's why you find that albinos are usually at a higher risk of developing certain types of skin cancers compared to the normal people. And also people like breaching, that's how they end in most cases. So always watch out. So skin cancers are common in those with albinism and those who bleach their skin in summary. So infection, infections, viral infections also induce cancers like HIV. HIV itself is immunosuppressive. It weakens our immune system, defense systems, and eventually our bodies become weak and they're invaded by each and everything, by virus, and they fail to fight and eventually end up with cancers. Then there's hepatitis B. Ladies and gentlemen, let us always go for vaccination against hepatitis B, C, and D. These viruses, especially B and D combination, uh, beta and delta in combination, they are very, very lethal. They, they are very, they are more deadly than B R O N or D R O N or C. Yes, hepatitis B. We how you know how we contract hepatitis B in most cases through sexual intercourse. Also, sharing clothes, the intravenous drug abusers, uh, people like tattoos. Hey, watch out! Uh, hepatitis B causes the liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma. B, C, and D, yes, and others also follow. Ipsen Iba virus, Ipsen Iba virus induces uh, Bakitsi lymphoma, nosopharyngeal carcinoma, uh, NPC, yeah, and the rest. Then we have also human papilloma viruses. Yeah. Having multiple sexual partners. This, this virus, especially strain 16 and 18, uh, even 33, 34, these strains induce cervical cancer in females. Dear mothers, dear sisters, dear daughters, uh, please, when as long as you're above 30, above as long as you're above 30, I repeat this, dear sisters, dear mothers, uh, I repeat this. It's a humble prayer and a humble request. As long as you're above 30. Then if you are even below 30 and you happen even to be HIV positive, yes, being HIV positive is not a death sentence. It happens, it happens, yeah. So if you are HIV positive, you should always go for screening for, H for cervical cancer, at least once every year. Once every year, you should visit that gynecologist and the uh, certain examinations are done to see if you are safe. Then if you are normal and you are free from HIV or you don't have a chronic disease that are immunosuppressive like uh, diabetes mellitus, uh, or you have other cancers, if you are not on immunosuppressive drugs, please, if you are normal, at least 30 and above or 35, every year should be going to visit a gynecologist and they, they examine to see if you have you don't have any risk, you are not at risk of developing cervical cancer. Because most of these cancers, by the time they are detected, they have actually started migrating, metastasizing, and invading distant organs. And you find that the person who first spends five years post-diagnosis and dies and loses the battle. You see? The same applies to breast cancer. The breast cancer, breast cancer has become a problem. And if it is also in subtype, many types, and you also, it also grows silent. By the time you realize it, the cancer. When you have your girlfriend, when you have your wife, please, and you're always celebrating together in that bedroom, please always palpate her breasts. We call it palpation, touch, touching the breasts. So that if you feel, if you feel if, as a husband or as a boyfriend, uh, <laughs> if you happen to feel something that is abnormal, an abnormal swearing or an abnormal lamp that has not been there, 
you should you should advise i should go running to to seek medical attention so that they know what it is as far as possible don't keep it until it, it starts causing problems and causing pain and by the time the disease is found it is too late okay so uh, human papilloma viruses you know multiple sexual partners of course homosexuals yeah you know so it's not good of course males we also keep on getting from this woman we take you home uh, so many girlfriends we take we spread the viruses of course it also causes penile cancer of the penis among the males and the cancer of also the rect uh, the anal region of course yeah you can also read about uh, genital warts Genital warts, uh, those are benign lesions that are caused by papiloma, human papilloma virus, strain six and the strain, strains six and eleven. Yes, we have human T lymphotropic viruses. These ones also induce cancers, or especially of the bone marrow. Of course, uh, leukemia virus, leukemia cancer in the category of leukemia. Human herpes virus A. This one also induces the Kaposi sarcoma, especially in immunocompromised patients. Uh, like HIV with AIDS, of course, and erudary, uh, Kaposi sarcoma, yes. Uh, we have parasitic infections like schistosoma hematobium, which causes bilharzia. People who come from such areas, uh, in, if they are not uh, treated, uh, they end up developing uh, cancer of the urinary bladder, that, uh, that bug that keeps the urine temporary before you can urinate it out, avoid it. Yes, then you have also bacteria, Bacteria that are associated with the cancer and we have this one that is implicated in the peptic ulcer disease or peptic ulcers, ulcers, stomach ulcers, Helicobacter pylori. Uh, yes, this one also has been implicated uh, in the stomach cancers, especially, yes. Then we have uh, drugs and hormones. Chronic exposure to certain anti cancer drugs uh usually also can induce actually again more cancers <laughs> uh, you see uh, but this is inevitable because the way when you are managing treating cancers weigh the benefits vis-a-vis -vis the risks and when the benefits are many we go with the benefits yes we go with the drug yeah then hormones uh yes paracetamol panado acetaminophen you know, this drug is one of the most abused drugs, misused, because you look at Panadol, Paracetam, Acetaminophen, and you call it a simple drug. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not a simple drug. Panadol uh, uh, overdose is fatal, it is very dangerous, but also with the chronic use of Panadol induces, causes liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma. There is a metabolite of Panadol called the NAP2I, which is called the any acetylbenzoquinone imine, it is the one which is carcino becomes uh, carcinogenic and induces and transforms the uh, hepatocytes to uh, to be to start off or to trigger off uh, carcinogenesis of the liver uh, or cancers or hepatocellular carcinoma. Then chronic exposure to certain hormonal contraceptives. Yes, hormonal contraceptives. I'm not discouraging you from using them. But when you use them for a longer period of time, you go at risk of developing cervical cancer, breast cancer. That is why these women who do not want to age, who fear to age, and maybe they're in the 50s and they have, their skins have started wrinkling, they reach a point and they said, why don't I go for hormonal replacement therapy? They go for hormonal replacement therapy, eventually they, their skins, they start to start, they, they come back to normal, they are looking a bit younger, wrinkles have, wrinkles have re reduced, but eventually, guess what happens? They start developing actual ovarian cancers, uh, breast cancers, uh, you hear that even cervical cancer, by the way, also, uh, the presence of the virus with the, it is also potentiated by also history of uh, contraceptive use especially the hormonal contraceptives, you need to know this. So those ones who do not want to age, I'm going to nange. Hey, I have my money. God gave me money. Money empire mashirinji. No muchire. Go say run sumi muchire. Pita mashirinji ad. The shirinji does if ten do muchire ko. Do mukung. The kanje kuisha chiri sen heza ad. The kanje kuziko le shano ko. The the ke gusa ad. The ebe ke ngaga kumi. Him nyaka makumi ni tan. Hey, okay. You will do that. Because you do, you fear aging, then you go for hormonal replacement therapy, unnecessarily, 
you end up with uh, those cancers that I'm talking about. Even these ladies, these ladies uh, uh, who start using hormonal contraceptives at an early age, uh, you are in a trouble because they induce with the time, uh, if you find that they put you at a risk of developing cancers, certain cancers at an early age. You need to know this, okay? So uh, then genetics, uh, stroke in B, category B, you have genetics, stroke inheritance. The, for example, certain genes like BRAC1 and 2, uh, explained by BRAC1, BRAC2, uh, heritage and polyposis, corrector carcinoma, uh, the Lynch syndrome that I talked about, all these, uh, that we, all these mutations that we keep on inheriting from uh, our parents, uh, from parents to the offsprings, and also offsprings who transfer the same genes, uh, abnormal genes like that, you find that, uh, that's why you find that certain cancers keep on running in families. When you read about races like the Jews, the Jews are also in categories, as you know, those the good, the good historians, you know, we have, uh, if you, you have history like me, uh, we have categories of Jews, Jews who have the Ashkenaz Jews, we have the Sephardic Jews, we have the Mizrahi Jews, uh, the Ashkenaz Jews have a lot of uh, cancers within their actually their gene pools because they 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 tend to intermarry. They like marrying their cousins, close relatives compared to other categories of Jews. Yes, you'll find the other Jews marrying distant. Okay, marrying from non relatives from the families of non relatives, distant relatives. But the Ashkenaz Jews tend to marry from the mostly from close relatives, those cousins, what what. That's why you, they, you find that you, they have, if you Google about Ashkenaz Jews, you know that they have so many mutations within their gene pools, which predisposes them to so many cancers. Uh, like there's so many actually diseases, not only cancers, but even other diseases that are genetic, inherited, yes. Yes, they, of course, they retain the IQ genes of the IQ, IQ, high IQs like that, but then when it comes to genetic diseases, yeah. That's why, for example, if, if I marry, for example, uh, my cousin, maybe sister, or a distant cousin, or, or another relative whom we are closely related, it means we have common genes, even good genes and bad genes. The genes which will predispose us to certain diseases, maybe mental illnesses in families. So it means if I marry my own, my close relative, and we happen to be having those genes, maybe for certain mental illnesses like schizophrenia, it means uh, at a certain point we are going to produce children with actually more amplified genes. And eventually we are going to end up with the, uh, those mental illnesses even manifesting further and further more within our gene pool, within our families. You see? So sometimes it is wonderful to marry from uh, the people we are not related at all. It is actually encouraged. But when it comes to good genes, like for example, genes of uh, big brains, IQs, uh, intelligence of intelligence. The more, of course, when you are natural intelligence and uh, intelligent in your gene pool and you marry your close relative, it means you are even going to keep on producing more superb children who are very, very smart. You need to know that. Doesn't mean that marrying close relatives is all that it is 100% bad. No, it also has its advantages, uh, man. It has advantages as well. But of course, it is a choice. I'm not saying that we start marrying our own relatives, cousins, and what, no, and getting married to her. No, 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 no. I'm not encouraging it, but it's also good to some extent. You see, I have to talk in, in terms of yin and yang. Everything has advantages and disadvantages, but as long as you balance it, you can also benefit from it. Yes. So genes, abnormal genes. So examples of cancers, we have breast cancer. I have told you if you are any female, not, not uh, breast cancer in most cases develops uh, silently, quietly. By the time a, a woman or, a, lady or a, a female realizes it, it has actually advanced. So any abnormal change you will notice on your wife, on your girlfriend, and maybe you are touch touching, please. You should advise her or take her to, for medical attention with immediate effect. Then for, uh, for breast cancer, this one is very terrible. All cancers are terrible, but this one is very, very aggressive. There are, there are so many types, of course, subtypes. It is in subtypes like that. 
Yeah, but you need to know that breast cancer, you need to be, always be very, very careful. Or if you are showering and you're a woman, you're a lady, and you happen to touch, and you are showering, you are in the shower room, and you touch your breast, and you feel an abnormal swelling that has not been there, please rush. Or any abnormal pain, because not all the breast cancer types will present with the swellings, you know. Some actually, uh, they don't present with any swelling, but you start feeling some pain. Please go. Don't keep it for, for a month, two years, two months, one year, two years. No. The moment you start feeling abnormal pain, go for checkups. Then prostate, uh, any male who is, even me when I clock 40, every year I will be going to, uh, to a urologist to test my prostate for, for screening so that, uh, so that I'm a bit safe. Because when any cancer, cancer diagnosis does not mean directly mean death sentence, no. If any cancer, every cancer is treatable, completely, and a person is cured completely, as long as that cancer is detected at an early stage before it has actually metastasized or it started becoming more aggressive, okay? That is what you should know. In, but in Africa, in most cases, we die early, we are cured by cancers. Because the because of ignorance, uh, partial because of ignorance, and also maybe screening uh, facilities are not enough. But and also we keep there that hey, you say I think this this region will go away. You keep it for one year, two years. By the time you start going for medical attention to seek medical attention, it has already advanced. You see. Then also we need to keep on sensitizing the communities like that worldwide, going to the TVs, radio stations like that. So. Please, as if you are a male and you are 40 years and above, please, every year should be going for, for screening at least every year once a year. It doesn't, you don't lose anything because this is cancer is also stubborn. It has killed many men and is still killing us. Even me when I clock 40 by God's grace, I will start going. Whether I'm a doctor, it, does, it doesn't know anyone. The cancer does not know anyone, does not know that you're a doctor, or you are not. It attacks anyone who can develop cancer. There's no human race, tribe, ethnicity that is immune to cancer. I know this. Cervical cancer, you know, please. I have already talked about ovarian cancer, chronic cancer, leukemias. These are blood cancers, uh, stomach cancer, esophageal uh, cancer of the esophagus, that tube that enables us to swallow, that conducts the food while we are swallowing up the stomach, that is the esophagus. Very common, esophageal cancer because of secondary to one, chronic consumption of, heavy chronic consumption of alcohol. Yes, those whiskeys of ours, we, we, instead of resorting to local bruiser and we love them, because for them they are a bit safer, by the way, with also weak beers. They are safety and cancer, you know, smokers, even the secondary smokers, passive smokers, or getting pancreatic cancer. These are just, I decided to pick you exam, common examples of cancers, okay? Then uh, diagnosis, of course, how do we diagnose cancer? We use bloody tests, uh, biopsies, uh, whereby we cut a, a, a piece of the flesh from uh, a suspicious lesion, and we take it for histopathology, for analysis, to see whether there is a cancer or not, or if, to see if we, in, it will progress to cancer. We did those are biopsies. Uh, we have immunohistochemistry as well. Uh, this, these are also modalities, imaging, but all these you cannot you go. Uh, I'm not saying that you go to a doctor. That doctor, uh, I want you to do immunohistochemistry on me. I want you to do to screen me for cancer uh, using imaging. No, it is him or her who determine which method to use. You are not the one. To give him instruction, don't become a wiseacre. I'm not saying that you become wiseacres. That doctor, uh, you do a biopsy on, on me and you see if I have cancer. No, don't wiseacre. You see, you cannot use Google and you become a doctor or a medic. You need very many years of training with experience. Okay, but it's also good to know uh, to have a clue about some of these uh, methods that we use to identify and diagnose cancer. So prognosis, yes, the diagnosis of cancer is not a death sentence. Most cancers are treatable if diagnosed the early. That's the bottom line, yes. Prognosis becomes poor if the diagnosis is made late. These days, I'm not, I'm, I'm very sorry to say this. 
These days, you find people being deceived in the various buses. You know, we travel. You can find the herbalist. I'm sorry, yes, hubs work. But you find a herbalist uh, marketing certain products that one product can choose diabetes, hypertension, cancer, choose asthma, choose a, a, a man can mention like 30 diseases that are cured by just one product. And you wonder, and that is how people are misled and they start actually refusing to go to the hospital and they keep on trying these things in the pursuit to seek for medical attention and to, to seek actually a curative method. My dear brothers and sisters, you don't stop being misled. Others even go to TV. Our politics, our government, I don't know when you shall start graduating. Someone who starts going to TV, like you look at the TV and the other TVs and is given the podium in the presence of many medics who know cancer, what cancer is all about. Then someone who starts teaching cancer that this herb treats cancer, this one, yes. I'm not refuting them. Herbal medicine is very, 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 very powerful. And there are herbs which treat cancer. Even most anti-cancer agents and cancer drugs, 99% of them are, are, are extracts or are plant arocaroids, like uh, those, those arocarating agents, the doxorubicin, what, what. All those uh, anti-cancer agents, 99% of them of anti-cancer medications are derived from plant arocaroids. I agree with you. But you will not find a herb that treats 10 cancers. It is a lie. They will eat your money. By the time you go back to the hospital, it will be too late. You have, bec you have been become impoverished. Then you reach also cancer institute or any other hospital with the cancer treatment services. You die. Then others resort to witch doctors. Others resort to pastors, my dear brothers and sisters. It is wonderful to pray. Yes, the moment you use those medicines, those medicines, the knowledge comes from God himself. The knowledge comes from God himself. Therefore, you should mix prayers with those medications. You'll be cured. But these pastors, I'm sorry to say so, I'm not condemning, I don't want to mention names. But you always see our men and women of God saying that in, in Jesus' name, you are healed from this cancer. You no longer you should, you should stop even going for chemotherapy, radiotherapy. You are healed in Jesus' name. And the person goes there, uh, even throws a party that, you know what, my pastor, my man of God has declared me healed. Therefore, I am free from these medications. From today, I'm free from cancer. Then after one year, the cancer is back. Then the person is actually goes back to the hospital to seek medical attention. They ask him, what happened? My pastor declared me free from cancer, and now it is back. Then you die, you see? Then you blame God at the end of it all. You blame God. I'm not saying that miracles don't happen. I'm a Christian, and I'm a Christian Catholic. Miracles happen, but those miracles must be investigated. Miracles happen. But there are suspicious miracles which you should not always follow and believe in. Yes, you should always pray and also take those medicines because the knowledge that is used to make those medicines and to prescribe them comes from God. Know it. I'm sorry if I have offended anyone. I'm sorry. I apologize and I stand to be corrected. Yes, you have witch doctors who keep on misleading the masses. They should be actually arrested. The government should start arresting them for misleading the population. Uh, these uh, so-called men and women of God who mislead the others, and they die. Some men and so-called men and women of God have gone ahead to stop patients with HIV from taking RVs, being declared and deceived that they are healed from HIV. They get to prococo meningitis and they die in just five months. They get TB and they die, having stopped their RVs. Others are deceived that they, you, st you, are, you are no longer, you are now free from diabetes meritus, you are free from hypertension. Stop medications, you are free from heart disease. Then four months later, they go to the hospital when they are worse, then they, they, are they die shortly. Now, who is a killer? It is that so-called man and woman of God who misled you is a killer. A murderer actually should be arresting them. 
Yes, I, but I'm not, I repeat it, I'm not saying that miracles don't exist. They happen and they still happen. But not everyone experiences miracles. Miracles are experienced by very few people, by the way. So uh, what should we do about uh, the situation that we are facing, not only as Uganda, but as the world, in as far as cancer is concerned? Yes, uh, we should advocate for, yes, preventive. What should we do? Yes, prevention or recommendations uh, to, to prevent cancer. Yes, we should have regular, massive health education nationwide. Uh, number two, data and the lifestyle modification. Uh, uh, regular, especially by annual or annual medical checkups uh, at various regional referral hospitals and the district hospitals. Uh, of course, from the national referral hospitals, regional referral hospitals to district hospitals like that. Advocating for training of more cancer specialists, the oncologists, and the, of course, uh, deploying them to various uh, cancer treatment centers in the country, like the government is doing. I, uh, how I pray that uh, they also fund the training of more uh, oncology uh, and surgical oncology, medical and surgical oncology specialists, and also pathologists uh, and cytotechnologists. Um, yeah, we need the, all of those. Uh, then regional screening services for cancer. This one is mentioned. Quality control in the food industry and agriculture sectors. You know, so many products, especially foods that come to our markets and we consume massively. Uh, yeah, Uganda National Bureau of Standards has a big job to do in as far as avoiding Kitukidogo is concerned, especially when it comes to food products and medicines. Food products, foods, and medicines, they should become more tough and even actually keep on imprisoning anyone who poison food or who, who contaminate food. For example, you know, the incidences that happened in 2019, whereby people were caught to within Kampara capital city area, certain abattoirs and butcheries were preserving meat using formalin, you know, formaldehyde. And um, they should have imprisoned them for handed them life imprisonment because very many people, I'm sure very many people have gotten diseases, including cancers because of, uh, imagine if you're a regular customer of a certain butchery or abattoir and you're always getting meat from there. Imagine. The same applies to engineers uh, yeah, who constructed the shade buildings in, in Itake and, and the, the earthquakes. Yes, the earthquakes uh, killed, they end up killing masses. So the same applies to these people. Yes, quality control in the food industry and agricultural sectors. Yes, also environmental. We must regulate also, we must be stringent, must be strict when it comes to environmental protection. Well, there are so many things which are predisposing us to various types of cancers. Then genetic screening, e.g. BRCA1 and 2, by doing what you call gene sequencing. For now, it is still a bit expensive, but it is very, very paramount to do regular genetic sequencing. Then number eight, we should also have the political will. Our politicians should stop on debating and everything stops on paper. They should always impose and follow up and so that everything is implemented. We can be, by the way, we have the capacity to be like the foreign countries like America, Europe, uh, Asians, who have the capacity but we lack the political will. That's why disease, and you know these diseases, cancers, cancer does not know a rich person, does not know a poor person, does not know a politician, does not know a, a bad leader, does not know a good leader, does not know a good leader, does not know who is a doctor and who is not a doctor. Cancer, no one is immune to cancer. Therefore, we can act together and to, together we shall keep on actually fighting and and also we should keep on researching and identifying the factors which lead to cancers. So uh, at this point, I declare the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, listening. So I believe at this juncture, we can uh, use this information and you keep on even adding on, of course, being a doctor does not mean that I know it all, no. I have senior colleagues, I have juniors, I have peers, and uh, who also have a lot of information to keep on adding on. 
So I'm not, uh, it's not that I know it or no. I've just given you, shared with you a tip of an iceberg. And I believe uh, if we keep on uh, uh, sensitizing ourselves and sensitizing the masses, sharing this information, uh, we can, together we can keep on achieving and we can keep on utilizing this information and we turn it into good to educate the masses. For example, if you happen to see this video, you can keep on sharing it to many other people who might, who might benefit from it. Actually, each one of us, you know, the world needs this information. How I wish so many doctors uh, like me would keep on actually coming on board and we keep on sharing this information as a team. Uh, we dis disseminate it to various parts of the world. I'm sure uh, we can uh, sensitize the masses and they know where to go at the end of it all. So that when you see any abnormality, any suspicious lesion on the body, any abnormal feeling, you, you rush. Most people, for example, most men above 50 years, they start by complaining of back ache, back ache. They go to the hospitals, health of other clinics, health facilities. They are treated for UTIs, UTIs, UTIs. I think it's a UTI. By the time back ache, back ache, back ache. By the time he realizes, by the time he reaches that doctor who will give him enough time and he examines that doctor who reads who reads books, who is always actually uh, keen and serious, who is not always hurrying to make money, that doctor who is not always hurrying to make money. Next patient, next patient, uh, come in, next patient, next, uh -uh, not those ones. I'm not meaning those ones. Those ones who are always keen who read, who like following up patients, who give patients enough time and they take a detailed history and eventually they examine fully. That doctor also, so that doctor is the one who ends up finding out where the problem is and unfortunately uh, identifies the problem when it is too late. By the time you go to cancer institute, or by the time you go to any hospital where there are uh, cancer screening and treatment services, you find that it is too late. The cancer has already invaded uh, the back bone or the spine, has invaded the spine. Maybe there are also other metastases uh, to the lungs like that. Mm. You battle with it for two years, three years, four years, after five years. Ah, so and so is pronounced dead. Died of what? Cancer. Of what? The prostate. Others cervical cancer, others breast cancer. When we have a road, we're in a dilemma, and none of us, none of us is safe. Me, we, none of us is safe. I say the cancer does not know anyone, does not know anyone. That is it. You need to know it. So I wish you the best. Thank you for watching and listening. Uh, we link up in the next episode when I will be sharing uh, about uh, certain types of cancers. Bye bye. Bye bye. Link up next time until next time.